Today's a very important day here in America. We cast our vote for the President of the United States, a person that we think best fits the moment, whose character is strong and their will is for that of the people. But this is a movie channel, so I'm going to talk about a president that's already come and gone. One whose leadership, moral compass, and ability to reach across the aisle to hear all sides was so profoundly acute, I'm afraid we're never going to get another one like him. I'm of course talking about Thomas J. Whitmore, the 42nd president of the United States of America. This is his story. <laughs> Before I go into detail about Whitmore, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and even like the video if you enjoy a little levity in your day. If you enjoy a laugh or two, hopefully, while we are at such an important milestone in this country. If you're watching from somewhere else, consider yourself lucky, maybe. Born in 1953, Thomas J. Whitmore was a scrapper. He was a strong-willed, ambitious, free thinker who just so happened to love his country. So much so, he was willing to fight for it. He took part in the Gulf War as a fighter pilot. And unfortunately, it would not be the only war this man would fight in. After departing the cockpit of his F-16 fighter from the United States Air Force, Whitmore started showing an interest in politics. Enter Constance Spano. Constance was a classmate of his from Harvard University, where they both attended and graduated. And she would go on to be his campaign manager and help him get elected into Tennessee's second congressional district. But more importantly, she was a friend. And what he lacked in experience, he would learn from her through that trust they had forged over the several years of their friendship. All that hard work, all that campaigning, all those long, tired nights would finally culminate into Whitmore becoming the youngest president of the United States at just the tender age of 39. Constance was also able to upgrade the resume, becoming the White House press secretary. From 1993 to 1996, Whitmore introduced several key pieces of legislation that, while having lofty ideas, never really found a footing. Because as we know, it's very hard to get anything accomplished in government. Different committees, different factions of people. Whitmore was hitting roadblocks at every turn. And perhaps it was because of his bullishness on these subjects trying to get these bills passed, favorability was getting low. But all that changed on July 2nd, 1996, when a dreaded phone call came in from Secretary of Defense Albert Nimziki, who as an aside, kind of a douchebag, he informs the press secretary, and by proxy that of the POTUS, that an alien invasion is coming to Earth. The vessel stops just outside Earth's orbit, but it separates in over 30 different vessels that would strategically be placed over prominent landmarks all across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we're at DEFCON 3 at this point. No one knows what the hell's gonna happen next. But that's not gonna stop President Whitmore from trying to communicate and find peace. Some would look back on this event and say Thomas J. Whitmore had an open borders policy and that's why things got out of control. These illegal aliens all coming into the country, they place themselves all over. How do we stop them? Do we need to? Are they a threat? Well, Whitmore has lots of smart advisors. He's got scientists. He has people that can communicate with these folks. So they go up in a plane. They attempt to close encounters of the third kind with these folks. They get some colors and some music going. They don't like the music. Now, legal scholars have been debating for years if these casualties that are about to take place could have been avoided. Had the president taken heed of the advice, the warnings given out to him prior to this event. You see that very morning, former satellite technician David Levinson had found a code within a signal sent down from a mothership. And in this code, he found out there was a communication going on between these ships. It was a countdown. A doomsday scenario was playing out. And when that number ticked down to zero, huh, checkmate. Not long after communications failed, all out bedlam takes place. The city destroyers open up to what looks like a harmless, somewhat friendly, beaming ray of light, but will very shortly after be revealed as the horrible death rays they are. <laughs> Full cities are 
decimated in the wake of these killing machines. They're killing the cats, they're killing the dogs, they're killing the pets. Actually, one of the dogs does survive. His name is Boomer. We know this because the president writes about him in his journal a few times. Must have been quite a special dog. Now, I don't need to tell you what happened next. It's one of the saddest, cruelest, darkest days in all of American history. Nigh of all of Earth's history, as these aliens carry out their attack, killing millions and millions of folks. Now it's at this time when the real president is gonna either rise to the challenge in front of them, or they're gonna go on national TV and claim the whole thing's gonna blow over in a week or two. This whole invasion's gonna be cleared up by Easter. Whitmore gathers the greatest minds and strongest allies he can possibly muster up, and he's going to take time to listen. He's going to think rationally about this. He's going to utilize all of his resources, those that are still standing, and do his very best to keep mankind alive to see another 4th of July. And again, I don't need to tell you this because we're still here today, but he succeeded. He tried diplomacy. It failed. He tried brute force. Also failed. And so what was left was thinking outside the bun. By being able to put aside his sordid past with David Levinson, he was able to form a newfound appreciation and respect for the man by listening to what this brilliant mind had to say and by taking one hell of a gamble to get this done right. He would send David and Captain Stephen Hiller up into space to a mothership where they would upload a virus directly into the computer mainframe of the alien UFO that was also thankfully running Windows 95 and they would blow the hell out of Dodge. The logic behind this were that all these UFOs were directly in contact with the mothership. So when this computer got sick, the rest of them caught a cold as well, which means dropping the ship shields, allowing our military forces to go in and blow the living fuck out of them. Are those ships bulletproof? No, sir. They go in, they shoot missiles, <laughs> And these ships blow up like the 4th of July. But how did we get here? How do you rally a nation in decline? Morale is at an all-time low. Everyone has lost someone at this point, including the president himself, now widowed from the beautiful first lady. Well, how you do it, folks, is through inspirational words. Not those of fear, not those of panic, but words of wisdom, words of guidance, Words of promise of a future to come that can be oh so wonderful if we can all pull together. Whitmore, grabbing a nearby mic around a group of sorry looking individuals that aren't all from military background, most aren't. Farmers, paper boys, one dude that's incredibly excited to just be there. He goes in front of these people that have nothing left to their name and he tells them what they need to hear. Good morning, good morning, in less than an hour. Aircraft from here will join others from around the world, and you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Mankind. Our words should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interest. Perhaps it's fate that today is once again the 4th of July, and you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We are fighting our fight to live, to exist. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday. But as the day the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day! <laughs> Sorry, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just a bit much. Uh, still today, it gets me. Just, just reading it back. Against the wishes of his generals, he got into an F-13 to fight right alongside the men and women he spurred into action. Truly inspiring stuff. And it was inspiring on that day. Not only did our troops go up into the sky, not only did we take down that destroyer, but we put out the word to forces all across the world and they got it done. They got it done. I want you to think about Thomas J. Whitmore. I want you to think about the character of that man. 
what he stood for. And look at these two candidates and see if you see a little bit more in either of them. But anyway, I know politics is a tough, ugly, messy thing, and it really can tear people apart. We can all rally around this one fictitious president and say, you know what? America got it right that time. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment below your favorite memory of this amazing man. Take care.